All right, we're going to view chapter 22, section 3, Spanish-American War in the United States in Latin America. All right, first thing we need to talk a little bit about is something we call yellow journalism. So if you remember in uh, the last chapter, we read stuff like The Jungle by Upton Sinclair and things like that. Yellow journalism is kind of on the same way. It's kind of where you exaggerate news stories for purposes of attracting readers. It's kind of like today when you're walking through the uh, checkout line at the grocery store and you get that magazine that talks about who's having a baby and, and who uh, um, needs to lose weight and stuff like that. All right, my wife falls for those things all the time. All right, so first thing we need to talk a little bit about the kind of uh, yellow journalism plays a role in is the uh, conflict in Cuba. Uh, so Cuba is a country that is literally located right off the uh, tip of Florida, um, literally within miles of Florida. All right. So what we have here in 1898, the U.S. Uh, sent a battleship called the USS Maine to Havana Harbor to protect uh, American interests. We had a lot of American businesses that were in Cuba and operating, and we actually send the Maine down there to protect uh, the U.S. interests. And what happens is, on February 15, 1898, the USS Maine exploded, and 266 Americans were killed. And what happened is, the cause of the explosion remained unclear. All right, so what happens is, the American newspapers immediately ran with the story publicized that um, Spain was responsible, where actually uh, it was, um, you know, was not Spain, all right? And what that did is, is here's an example of a, uh, what a newspaper headline might look like. Destruction of the warship Maine was the work of the enemy. And what this leads to is the Spanish-American War, all right? Angry Congress declares war on Spain. The war occurs in two phases, and we'll talk a little bit about this real quick here. Um, phase one is the Philippines, all right? Uh, the Philippines were a Spanish colony, and the U.S. wanted to weaken Spain by winning a victory there. Uh, Commodore George Dewey destroyed the Spanish fleet in Manila Bay without losing one single American life. The U.S. Um, was allied with Philippine rebel Emilio Aguinaldo to control the Philippines. Now, what happens here is the idea that we, we defeated the Spanish fleet in Manila Bay, but we couldn't hold the Philippines without getting the help of um, the rebel leader. You don't always work with people you necessarily like. You sometimes have to agree to work with people because you know that you need their help. Um, for example, we know that you know, in World War II, we are allied with the Soviet Union and Joseph Stalin after World War II. They are one of our biggest enemies with the whole Cold War, with communism and um, democracy. So this gives you a little bit of idea where the Philippines is located. Now, the second thing we need to talk about is war in Cuba, which would be phase two of the Spanish-American War. All right? Um, they was led by the first U.S. volunteer cavalry. They were nicknamed the Rough Riders. These were uh, cowboys, miners, college students, policemen, athletes, Native Americans, and future President Teddy Roosevelt. Um, they attacked the stronghold of Santiago, Cuba, um, and destroyed the fleet as it was attempting to escape. Um, a week later, the U.S. took Puerto Rico, and Spain surrendered on August 12, 1898. Total wartime was less than three months, so this was not a long, drawn-out war that um, cost us a lot of American lives and, and money and things like that. Um, here's a picture of uh, Teddy Roosevelt and the Rough Riders. Results of the war, which is the big thing. All right, United States here. Um, we uh, received the Philippines, which was a colony. Uh, you know, a colony. Uh, we received Puerto Rico, Guam, and we get the right to intervene in Cuba, which is what they call the Platt Amendment that gave us the right and ability to intervene in Cuba if we felt necessary. And the bigger issue is, it, this kind of established ourselves as a world power. Other results of the war here. Um, Treaty of Paris. Uh, Spain forced to give up Puerto Rico, Guam, Cuba, and the Philippines. Um, and here's again the Platt Amendment. All right, so that's just a review of that as well. Um, and we got to build a naval base at Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, which is still exists today, even though Cuba is controlled by a non-favorable U.S. Um, uh, 
government that's you know, led by Raul Castro and the communists. Um, also, uh, not everybody uh, agreed that we should be getting involved in all these conflicts around the world. And the policies that, uh, you know, the anti-imperialistic um, uh, policies th that people believed in um, led to the formation of the Anti-Imperialistic League, a group that opposed the creation of the American colonial empire. And next we'll be talking about uh, chapter 22, section 3, which focuses on the Panama Canal.